Welcome back. In this section, we will look at abstraction, which is one of the concepts of OOPS. So let's look at abstraction. Um, as we saw earlier, right? This specifically focuses on hiding complexities, right? So it, this is the focus of abstraction. We already saw encapsulation, polymorphism, inner returns. We saw these three. Now we are looking at abstraction. So what is abstraction, right? So by definition, Abstraction means it's hiding complex implementation detail and showing only the essential information to the user. This is what is abstraction, right? Let's take an example, right? So this is a car, right? If you open code, it looks like that. But every morning, if you look at this before you drive the car, you'll be paranoid, right? So you'll be worried whether the car is going to run with so many parts running and it's going to be very difficult for you to comprehend the entire thing. As such, as a user, you don't need this implementation detail, right? All you need is something like this, where it looks dashy and flashy, and you can add and drive the car. Now, this is abstraction. Abstraction means you have to hide the complex implementation detail. Now, let's look at abstraction, right? So, um, we'll get hands-on. So, that's the way we usually do it. We'll go hands-on. We'll look at an example, and then we'll see how it works. Let's get to online GDB. So, let's look at this class. Before we go into the different functions, where do I need to use abstraction, right? That's the core point. Let's look at this. So let's assume that I am an architect who has developed many cars, right? So I know what's required in a car. So the basic features of a car, I know what it means. The car needs a fuel tank. The car needs to have an engine. The car needs to have a seats. So all I know is, okay, hey, whoever is going to build a car, if it has to be called a car, it needs to have this. So that's an abstract class. An abstract class is defined by someone who wants to make sure that all these essential features are there. So let's take a real project implementation, right? At the start of the project, probably there is an abstract class defined saying that, hey team, we are going to build a product. In this particular product, all these features and thirds have to be there, right? And we define them an abstract. We defined as abstract, what does it mean, right? So let's get into the detail. Now, Abstract class, if you look at it, there is a keyword called abstract. So that means this is an abstract class. Okay. So like a regular class, you're seeing the class variables here. You're seeing a constructor here, right? And you're seeing a parameterized constructor here. No change so far, right? And also you're seeing a method, which is normal, right? So a method, which an actual definition is here. The display method, which is going to display what is the fuel capacity, what is the speed, what is the make of the car, all these things are very similar to your normal methods or normal classes. Now when you look at it, you see three methods here. All three are abstract methods, right? One is engine, one is gearbox, one is fuel tank. Now um, overall, right, at the start of the project, let's assume we are all going to make a car as a team, right? So what we say is, okay, we'll define something called as an abstract class and we'll have engine, gearbox, and fuel tank. So this is how we define it. Now I'll get to the main method, right? Let's see the main method. So I'll scroll down to the main. If you see, there is nothing but a hello world. I have not done anything with respect to the abstract class in main. So I will do a run here. If you see, I'm running, hello getting printed, nothing, right? But what have I done here? I have said that there is something called as an abstract class, right? where some of the methods are not actually implemented. I have not done any implementation. So that means what I'm saying is, hey, if someone else wants to build a car, you have to implement it. That's what we're saying here, right? So Java as such accepts it. Java says, fine, you define it, but don't try to create an object of that abstract type. So let me try to create an object of that abstract type. We defined a car. I am going to say car c equal to new of car. I will not allow you to do this. Let's run this. Uh, car is abstract, cannot be instantiated. Why is Java not allowing you to uh, instantiate it? Because it's saying that, hey, engine, gearbox, fuel tank is not even defined. I don't know what it is. If uh, after you create this, if you call that method, I don't know what to call. So this is abstract class, but why do we need this abstract class? Now, clearly we are saying that, hey, anyone who wants to build a car, make sure you're building the engine, gearbox, fuel tank, you build all these things, only then it can be called a car, right? That's the reason for the abstract. 
Now let's try to create the one. I'll open the second program and then I'll show where it is actually implemented. Let me open that. Now this is a class. I've just opened this new one where you have Ford car which extends the car class, right? So it extends the abstract class car, but I've defined a new Ford. It again has the constructor as usual. Super is the first one so that the current class is constructor is called. So all the default values are initialized variables. And now I'm saying the make is Ford car. And for engine, let's assume I have to type the implementation for engine here. For now, I've just given in here saying, hey, the detailed implementation for the Ford car engine comes here. Gearbox again, I've done this here, right? And uh, for fuel tank again, I've given here. I've not given a detailed implementation. As of now, it is a do nothing method. It will not do anything. But let's assume that this is the actual implementation. And I want to run this one, right? So let me run this one and see what happens. So let me go down the main that I still have it for the car again. If you run it, it's going to crash again going to say, hey, for car still car is abstract, right? Car is not a fully implemented class. Car is the base class, which is abstract. But I say Ford, right? So Ford C equal to new of Ford. This is a valid one. There is no problem with this. Ford has actually implemented everything here. You don't have anything, but let me see C dot display, right? So now it will display whatever we had as the display method earlier, right? Ford car with fuel capacity zero is running at speed zero, right? So it's giving this detail. I mean, if I had given some, now I'll run this one. So we have so we have the parameterized constructor. Now I'll run this one. Yes. Now you're seeing the value capacity is 100 and uh, speed is 10. So we have this parameterized constructor, right? So but what I want is I want the display to be changed, right? I don't like the current display. I can still override it here, right? So I can say override. This is called annotation. It's a good practice call this one so that Java docs can pick it up. So now I'm going to say that public void display. I'm going to say, hey, this is the Ford car, right? Now, if you run the display method, whatever we had in the base class is overridden. You see that this is the Ford car comes in, right? So net net, this is what is abstraction. So abstraction means you are whoever is the abstract class creator knows what functions have to be there to call something as a car, right? He knows in and out. He is the business SME who knows everything about what needs to be in a car and not everything needs to be implemented at that point. Some methods can be implemented. Some methods need not be implemented. And then whoever is extending this, right? Whoever is extending this car, they know, they now clearly know that, oh, for me to call myself as a car, I need to implement the engine. I need to implement the gearbox. I need to implement the fuel tank. If I do that, then I can call myself a car. Then that person who is implementing it will implement all the three and after it is done now this object Ford is a car right so now if you run a run create an object of this type definitely it will work and uh, you can use it now sometimes what might happen is the author right who actually created the earlier first one the car might think that hey I don't want certain methods someone change it right for a car to be a car, I want this to be the display, right? I don't want anyone to change it. So he can say final. That means this is the display. Even if you implement some other car, you cannot override it. So if I call it final and now given that I have given an override in the um, in the up class, right? It says display in Ford cannot override display car, right? Because this is the final implementation. So whoever defined the base class has said that, nope, you cannot override it, right? So now you have to remove this override. That means whatever is there in the base class, that is the final version. You cannot do it, right? So now if you run it, it will work fine. So no issues. So this is abstraction, right? So let's get back to the theory part now. So let's get back here. Abstract class uses the abstract keyword, right? So it's small a, not capital A, but abstract keyword is the keyword that it uses. It has, it can have abstract methods, right? There can be certain methods which are implemented. 
but certain methods can be abstract. We saw that. So some methods can be implemented. It can have constructors, but it cannot be instantiated. Abstract classes cannot be instantiated. So only after it is implemented, you can instantiate it. So this is what abstract class.